Blog Talk Radio. Welcome, world. Welcome once again to Tuesday Talk with Key West Lou. I am your host, Louis Patron. Today has been the most difficult time I have had in preparing this block, which I, this Black Talk Radio show, which I've been doing for about six or seven years. Uh, and the reason is, uh, there's two important things today. Uh, one is the Ukraine, Russia, and the other is the Ottawa uh, truck convoy problem. And both of these items started a couple of weeks ago. And each day I wrote about them in my daily blog that I write in the morning. And now I'm going to talk about them on the Internet with you uh, on Blog Talk Radio, on my Tuesday talk with Key West Lou show. And let me tell you something. It's difficult to put these two important items together and get it packed into 30 minutes. Uh, But I'm going to try. If I don't, I don't. I know I'll get... uh, the Ukraine situation ends in, as so long as part of the show tonight, and we'll see what happens. But bear with me if all of a sudden I say I'm in the middle of Ottawa, and I say I have no more time. Thank you for listening. We'll talk again. We're going to go tonight, obviously, then, to the U- Ukraine, Russia, London, Washington, D.C., Poland, China, uh, Ottawa, Uh, the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, the mid-Atlantic, and to Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia, places we've never been, some of these places. All right, we're going to start with the Ukraine-Russia situation. Now, since last night something happened, I wrote my blog yesterday morning, last night something happened, then this morning uh, I wrote my blog, based on what I knew this morning. And since this morning, things changed this afternoon. Uh, Biden went on TV and said what the sanctions would be and all this sort of stuff. So my show may be a bit chopped up. I hope not. But I'm going to start with where I was this morning, Uh, even though some things have changed since my morning blog. And I'm going to pick at my blog right now because it's a good place to start to put this thing hopefully together. Uh, The title was Incursion is War. The United States must not parse words. Full sanctions expected and required. Uh, And I got into that because the, there was a question. Was this this, uh, an incitement? Was this uh, an invasion? All right. What the hell was it? Because Putin did step over the line, but he claims he went into these two little areas that have really been under Russian control by by local Russians who were really Ukrainians, and they'd been fighting with Ukraine for eight years. So it was six of one and a half a dozen of the other. Uh, and this made me say to myself, oh, my God, what is Biden going to do? He should not get – this is like a Donald Trump trick. You know, delay, 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 do things to make things go, take longer. Because the longer this thing goes, the more beneficial it is to Putin. Recognize, when did you last see in your lifetime the leaders of many countries traveling to another country to see the leader of that country? They have been chasing after Putin for the last two weeks. You had Biden. Uh, Macron from France, uh, others, a couple of others, many on the phone. Putin loves all this attention. Are you kidding me? They're kissing his ass. Please don't do this. All right, let me get started from this morning. Where we were this morning before Biden spoke. To start a war, I said, does not require a Hitler-type blitzkrieg or a Japanese sneak attack, an incursion is sufficient. And my friends, an incursion is one step over a line. And that, in effect, is what Putin did when 
He went on TV in Moscow yesterday and said what he was doing and why, and it really was just a step over a line. It was even a question whether it was an invasion. Uh, smart man, this Putin. I said the United States must not parse words. The world understands. The United States must not fail in the eyes of the world as it has done in the recent past. Mr. President, full sanctions, nothing less. He didn't hear me, by the way. Today, the world is waiting to hear from us, from the United States. Failure, failure to do so will weaken the United States' recent NATO alliance that, and I quote, we all stand together. Also, China, they're watching us, will determine we are not the democratic world leader viewing us, the United States, as a, and I quote, weakened power. I said Germany is to be congratulated. It stood up in a timely fashion by immediately halting approval of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Big on the part of the Germans because they need, they get most of their oil and gas from Russia. And this pipeline deal, they're in the process of construction and it will go to Germany. And by stopping it, they're screwing up Putin. He needs this pipeline to make more money for his country. The biggest thing that Russia has to sell is gas and oil. That's 25% of their income. And Germany, who no one thought would do this, did it. They said, we're stopping construction. We're stopping our approvals. Nothing's going to be done at this time. So congratulations to Germany. Now, I don't know if we did our job. I'll, keep, I'll get to that as I go along. Putin, last night, ranted and raved on TV for more than an hour, justifying his and Russia's position. Putin, obviously an excellent speaker, as many despots have been in the past. Hitler and Castro, two examples. Putin views himself as a peacemaker. He should take another look in the mirror. He is a warmonger. Former acting CIA director John McLaughlin said, and I quote, Putin has choreographed this with the hope that we and the Europeans will debate whether this is an invasion or not. McLaughlin saw it. Most people in this country saw it. Putin set us up for a delay game to be played. All right? Continuing with his quote, McLaughlin's, and hoping that throws us enough off balance that he will pay a minimal price for the first slice of the salami. Now, the die has been cast. We've heard this as a historical term. The die has been cast. This is even more historical. The Rubicon has been crossed. That was when Putin uh, decided he was going to take over officially those two I don't, even, I don't even recall the name of these two little uh, pieces of land uh, that he claims are part of Russia. And same excuse he's going to use when he tries to take all of the Ukraine. Uh, but, you know, the die's been cast when he did it. The Rubicon has been crossed. He crossed it. Uh, and now the issue becomes sanctions. What's Biden going to do? And I, I have felt that Biden would pussyfoot, and I believe he has. And I'm going to get into this in more detail, I hope, before my show runs out, because I don't believe the sanctions just done today by Biden are sufficient to accomplish anything. We need more. We needed the most severe sanctions, severe. I mean, what Putin is doing is saying we're going to go to war, Excuse me, my friends, but his testicles must be cut off right now at the start of this thing. All right, now, going to what happened this afternoon with Biden on TV. Uh, Biden and the sanctions. Uh, he sanctioned some banks, two banks, uh, all right, and several Russian oligarchs. The two banks are attached to the military. Uh, one of the big shareholders in both banks is Putin. Uh, you have to understand, P 
Putin is thought to be the richest man in the world, more rich than, for example, a Jeff Bezos, uh, because his entire career, Putin has always got, this is written up all over the place every now and then, he gets 20% of any of the action Russia gets involved in, 20%, and he's accumulated tons of money, and he doesn't have to pay taxes, he won't have the problem that Trump is having. Anyhow, uh, and this is the beginning of a Russian invasion, he said, of the Ukraine. Now, he didn't say that yesterday. That was a problem with Biden. Yesterday, he was pussyfooting around. Well, I don't know. His, his aides were saying, well, maybe it wasn't an inv- invasion. We can't do that. We're always doing things like this. It either is or it isn't. And if it is, call it for what it is and go after it. Okay. Now, the sanctions uh, will be heavy against these banks, no question about it. Not enough, though, and I'll tell you why in a second. The oligarchs are very rich Russians. There are a group of people in Russia who have made a ton of money, not millions, billions of dollars, because they are part of Putin's group, his social group, his business group. I don't know what kind of a group, but they benefit all the time. So... Biden is also, I love this though, he's sanctioning, he's tied up their their bank accounts and their property in the United States. He wants Putin's buddies to suffer along with uh, uh, Putin because his position is correctly so. These people, these oligarchs have benefited by every bad move Putin has made over the years, so they should be in a position to pay also to suffer also. The sanctions against both the banks and the oligarchs will be heavy. Biden said more sanctions will follow uh, if Putin proceeds further. Well, you know, don't screw around. Cut his testicles off right now because he's not a stupid man. Putin is not stupid. We've been saying for two weeks we're going to sanction him. And Biden has sat down with him at least two times and talked to him, I don't know how many times, on the telephone, and so has our Secretary of State, and they have spelled out what the sanctions are going to be. Now, if you tell me how you're going to hurt me in two weeks' time, if you tell me how you're going to hurt me in one week's time, I'm going to do what I have to do to take care of myself, to protect myself, to cover my ass. And don't you think... Knowing where the hammer was going to fall, Putin and his friends and the banks had moved their money, a lot of their money, most of their money, out of anything the United States could sanction. And have it's disappeared someplace. It's gone. This is gone, gone money. No one will ever find it. No one will ever be able to trace it because these aren't stupid people. Uh, so we've lost some of the punch here. This is what I'm trying to say. The United States... In our typical fashion, we're open with people. We told them what we were going to do. And now when we go to do it, we're not going to be as effective. We're going to hurt them a little bit, but we're not going to be as effective as we could. Biden also said he's going to send additional United States troops uh, into the Baltic states on NATO's eastern flank, which borders Russia. And that we're talking about, we're talking about Estonia, We're talking about Latvia and and Lithuania. Uh, I think he should also send additional troops troops into Poland because in the end, that's what Putin wants. He wants Poland, just like Hitler wanted Poland. And that's where Hitler went first. Uh, Now, there are 27 other NATO nations, all right? Each member will be doing something sanction-wise in this thing. We don't know yet well, how and how much, who and how much, but that will come out. Great Britain, Boris Johnson, got to give him credit, just like I give credit to Germany. He stepped up today, okay? And he said, Great Britain is sanctioning five banks. We have frozen Russia's assets in Great Britain. And also, he said, We have taken three Russian billionaires, the oligarchs. He says, we've taken three of the oligarchs, we tied up their money, and we've also prohibited them, 
prohibited them from traveling to Great Britain. Pretty cool. He's doing his thing right up front. All right. The sanctions are good. What Biden did was good. He didn't do enough. That's my point. Uh, I don't even think he did half of what he could have done. I don't think he did half of what he told Putin he was going to do. And that's what bothers me. This gives Putin leeway and gives him time again to prepare for this avalanche uh, money-wise against him. This was only an opening salvo by Biden today. We needed more. And I'm being negative. I don't know everything. I don't know much. I'm not in Washington. Biden's job, people in Washington, they're above my pay grade. But this is, I I read, I think I understand things. This is what I feel. Uh, Now, again, what Germany did is extremely big, okay? That hurts Russia the most that was done to day. That's the story. I don't know where the hell this thing's going to go now. Let's see if i got a couple more notes here. Oh, yes. I wanted to mention this, too. Uh, how long is this going to take to come to a head, this Russia, Ukraine, United States, NATO situation? Well, from what I understand, from what I've read, and I, I listen to these people on these uh, news talk shows, some of whom are very smart. They've got they're really brilliant people with experience, some of whom you never hear about till a problem comes up that they're a specialist in. It seems that it'll take 6 to 12 months to see what's going to happen. This is like a Donald Trump lawsuit. Uh, Putin can sit back now and just like let everything ferment a little bit uh, and boil over a little bit, but he doesn't have to make another move because his ass is covered, in my opinion with the sanctions, the banks, the money. I, he doesn't have to make another move for 6 or 12 months. He can do anything he wants. He can do it tomorrow. He can do it next week. But from what I can gather, he'll take a long time, 6 to 12 months. No rush, no rush at all. And you have to understand, not just the Ukraine, he wants those three Baltic countries I mentioned, and then he also wants Poland. This is just the beginning of a big show the worst is yet to come all right that takes care of the ukraine and russia i i wrote tons more of this stuff this week i'm some of my biggest blog items in the morning covered this situation as well as ottawa and so now my friends i am going to ottawa and this uh truck convoy thing and actually, I, I haven't. I've got some notes on my blog. So let me see here. Uh, that in my blogs that I write, and it's very little that I ha- have. But what did I say about Ottawa? And I wrote it uh, today, this morning. I'm going to read this too. It's very, very short. And then I'm going to go into my thoughts and what I believe. What a difference a day makes. We've had many, many days, every day, a lot about Ottawa, Canada, and the truck convoy. It's difficult this morning to find any news, okay, about the Ottawa truck convoy problem. Why? Canada has pretty much cleaned up the situation. The truck problem, 24 days long, it's gone. Canada took a few days to get its act together. When done... It moved like all get out to resolve the problem. It did not pussyfoot around and delay as we do, the United States does, with regard to demonstrations. The final step was Friday. Beginning Friday, the Ottawa police went in and arrested 191 protesters. People, there were about 1,000 people who came in in the last three weeks, and they, you know, they set up tents and everything else. They didn't have any truck they were sleeping in, but they came to protest. Like we had a, a, we've had some biggies in this country. Wasn't it Oregon last year? I can't remember. Oregon, Washington. Uh, but they came and they stayed. They stayed for months. They also told by what started off as something like 800 tractor trailers, all right, this convoy, there were only 57 left on, on Friday, and the police went in and towed those 57 away, 
okay? And they removed tents, et cetera, that had been erected by the protesters for meetings and meals. They also moved trailers with heated toilets. God bless them. They were smart. It's cold up there. It's wintertime. But they also moved trailers with heated toilets and two saunas. There were a handful of people this past weekend who refused to leave and were trampled by police horses. Oh, that sounds so terrible. Well, if they aren't going to get their asses out of the way, they know they're causing trouble. They're proud and happy to be causing trouble. Let them get banged up a little bit. That's my attitude. Very simple. An order has returned to Ottawa for all intents and purposes and Canada also as of yesterday. Ottawa's mayor advised that the trucks, campers, and vehicles recovered, there's more than 180 of them, would be sold at public auction. The Emergencies Act, which was in, this was passed in, I think, 1887, never used before in Canada. It was invoked by Trudeau and gave the mayor authority to do so, and Trudeau a lot of authority to do other things. Uh, now, let me talk to you from over the, from the top of my head here on this. Uh, this thing started. When this thing started 24 days ago, its purpose was to protest uh, the mandates, uh, restrictive mandates because of coronavirus, especially the vaccines. They were anti-vaccine. This is why the tractor trailers came mile after mile, block, 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 street after street in the main areas of Ottawa, eventually blocked the highways going to the Ambassador Bridge, which was the main connection between the United States and Canada. Canada is our biggest trading partner. We are their biggest trading partner. Both countries, a combined loss of $360 million a day because nothing could get over the bridge because the trucks were there. Uh, now, what makes me laugh is they were against vaccines. The problem is 90% of the Canadian people have been vaccinated. Did you hear me? This is before this bullshit with the with the block with the uh, convoy. Ninety percent of the people in Canada have been vaccinated against the virus. That's better than us. We're up to sixty four percent, I think. I don't even know if we'll ever make seventy. But they paid attention up there. You didn't hear any problems in Canada. So whoever planned this thing, this convoy. I uh, realized they'd screwed up, and two days later they said it was now the Freedom Convoy. Now, Freedom for what? I don't know. i got to tell you, I really don't know, but they changed the name to Freedom Convoy. Uh, let me share with you that these were families in some of these uh, trucks that came through. 25% of the children, I'm sorry, 25% of the people, in those tractor trailers were children, 25%. They brought their kids with them to sleep in the trucks in the middle of the winter uh, and be involved in whatever was going on there. Uh, the kids were playing games in the snow. It was on the Internet. And they were having a good time. Nothing wrong with it. But you don't place your kids in a position of danger. I don't understand these people. They took their kids with them to spend two weeks, okay, in the streets living in these trucks or in a tent. Uh, now, um, what do we do next here? Where are we? Uh, the reason this thing moves so swiftly is I don't know how Canada's laws work. I know how they work here. I have been saying for years now that we have too many laws, that we have judges who are all screwed up. we got to change the system. And how we, so like judges, we, we've got not just the Supreme Court. I'm talking about our everything down to the lowest type judge. And our laws, I can't tell you how horrible it is with regard to laws. Every time, I saw this through my professional career, 46 years. Every time there was a problem with a congressman from a particular district, he'd go back to Washington and tell his friends, do you know what happened to Mike and so-and-so here? And they would say, that's terrible. we got to pass the law. And they passed all these bullshit laws that only add to the confusion of what's going on. Uh, now, every time a new law is passed, there are rules for what has to be done. You can't. 
You didn't hear anybody in Canada go to get a court order. They can't get them up there for this kind of stuff. Uh, here in this country, right away, you know what? Uh, they won't let me get fuel. They won't let me get food. Uh, they'd, be, they'd be going to the court. The judges would issue injunctions. And they'd be sitting there for several months yet if this was the United States. All right? We've got to correct this situation. It's, it's almost to the extent of being an evil today. Uh, how our, our court rules and our laws act and react to situations. Uh, now also, Trudeau signed an executive order, gave the police permission to do bad things, like uh, rip the wire someplace in the motor of the, tr- of the truck, uh, take certain parts out, and permission to d- dump some kind of foam into the fuel tank. Uh, you know, I've heard of people throwing sugar in, and I don't know, something else, but I never heard foam. But they were putting foam in these tractor trailers to hurt, to make these people suffer. Get your ass out of here, okay? You don't belong here. Uh, and you didn't hear anybody, a judge, coming out with an order because nobody went to a judge. Because Canada doesn't permit judges at this stage of the game or in this type of situation. Uh, and so it went. And so it went. I compliment Trudeau. I compliment the Canadian people who were anti-convoy. I also want to state something I wrote one morning in my blog about the situation. I think this is a worldwide situation. They had, at the same time, a weekend of truck convoys in Australia, big time, New Zealand, and I think India. And they threatened to come to the United States, to the Washington, D.C., for something or other. Now they're threatening that on the day the President uh, State of the Union addressed March 1st, they are going to be in Washington protesting the truck convoy. They also stood all day and blasted their horns just to aggravate people, by the way. Now, the federal government is getting ready all right now with additional fencing like we had last year for protest. Uh, And they they got their heads together better better now, I think, as to handle, handle how to handle a situation like this. So we're going to see what's going to happen. But there's got to be money from someplace, from people who have money, who are out to disrupt our government. And I think they've gotten their noses into this truck, truck convoy situation. Uh, guess what? I covered... <laughs> I covered the Ukraine, and I covered Ottawa, and I'm thrilled that I got through it all. And I've got two minutes left. So no, I have some other things to talk about, but no sense in getting into them. Uh, was, what was it? I was going to talk about the San Francisco School Board, uh, the burning of the cargo ship with all those beautiful cars on it. Uh, the, uh, there's now an HIV cure, and... Uh, if if you're a pregnant woman and not have been vaccinated, there's a good chance your child will be stillborn. And my final issue was rents and how they're skyrocketing all over the country. We know it only too well and have known it here in Key West. Well, my friends, that is the show for this week. Uh, I thank you for joining me again. And until next week, good night. <laughs>